Welcome back, everybody, to 360 Trading View TOS tutorial uh, focusing on advanced order types. And this is part three of our uh, advanced order types tutorial series. And in this video, what we're going to be talking about is we're going to be covering the OCO orders, uh, what OCO orders are, how they work, and when you should be implementing a OCO order. So let's start off with just explaining what an OCO order is. OCO stands for one cancels other. And basically what that means is when one order triggers, the other order is going to be canceled. Uh, the reason why you would actually use this is when you're, like when you leave an order open uh, with the other types of advanced orders, uh, what happens is, is that they're not canceled until you manually do so. Uh, so if we're, doing an order such as uh, with you know in the case of an OCO where we have a upside uh, exit and then we have the other leg of the of the order is going to be our stop um, once one of those triggers then the other order is going to stay open which can result in an individual potentially going uh, short on a trade that they didn't intend on, on going into because they forgot to, to, to delete a closing order. Uh, so it's the difference between selling to open and selling to close, which is, can be a very, uh, in, is it, which is a very important difference when um, you're not intentionally trying to short something. Uh, so we're going to pull up our uh, order entry window, which we have here, and we're going to look at the first triggers OCO. The way this works is this is a dynamic order type similar to the first trigger sequence, except for the fact that instead of a sequence of orders, uh, when that when your first order triggers, it's going to trigger an OCO. And you know, like I mentioned, this is something that I use frequently, um, and it poses as an excellent tool to help reinforce discipline uh, when it comes down to managing positions. And I'll, I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. So let's say, for example, I want to buy the Apple 114 calls. Okay. And my strategy says that, well, my strategy calls for a stop at about 80 cents and an upside target at, let's say, um, $1.20. Okay. Uh, so the way this would work is we would enter our order, okay, which is the 114 calls, which you'll see that you notice that I, I just clicked on the ask on the option chain and it went ahead and populated that. Well, the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to click sell in the bid, and it's going to pull up a second order here. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a third one, and that's going to pull up a third order here. Okay, uh, so let's break this down really quick. This first order is our trigger order; that's our entry. The second order is going to be our profit target. This is where we want to exit for upside. And then our third order is going to be our stop. This is where we're limiting our risk. So how we set this up is going to be, as I mentioned, we're going to look for a dollar twenty, and we're going to set that limit to ninety. And then we're going to change because we don't want this to execute and immediately sell. We're going to change this to a stop limit. And we talked about how to set up stop limits in the previous tutorials. If you missed those, you need to go back to the website, check them out, uh, and we go into a pretty in-depth explanation as far as how stop limit works. Stop limits work. Um, you can also use a trailing stop with this as well, um, and it's it's the same application as if you're using a normal trailing stop with a single order, uh, which is also explained in the uh, trailing stop tutorial on uh, 360tradingview.com. Uh, so just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to just stick with the normal stop limit. So we're going to define our uh, limit at 80 cents. I got about a two cent bid and ask spread. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our mark at about 82, just because I want to make sure that I get that fill. Okay. So what we have here now is an automated order. So what's going to happen here is, and let's take a look at the order confirmation dialog. Uh, what's going to happen here is that once I buy the 114 calls at 90 cents, these orders are then going to be triggered, which is going to be an upside sell order for my profit target, which is going to be $1.20 according to my trade plan. And then not only that, a downside risk protection, which is going to be my stop at about 80 cents. So what happens is, is that when one of these 
or one of these secondary orders actually executes and is filled, then the other order is going to be canceled. So I'm not going to have this floating order to sh uh, because once once I once I eliminate this position either at 80 cents or at dollar 20, I'm then going to I I won't have that floating order sitting around that's going to potentially short these calls because I'm no longer holding the position. So that's the real benefit behind a OCO order is it allows you to preset these orders and define your upside profit target, your downside risk protection, and it's all automated for you. So what we would then do is we would execute that order and we would sit on it and we would just let it go. Um, and what this is going to do is this is going to keep us from, like I had mentioned before, fiddling with the trade uh, when we shouldn't have. We, have a, we put together a trade strategy, we put together a trade plan for a reason. Okay, and granted, there's always going to be circumstances that may require us to adjust our position if necessary, but it's always best to stick with the plan. There's a reason why you spend the time charting. There's a reason why you spend the time defining your targets. There's a reason why you spend all that time putting together this strategy. And the last thing you want to do is because of the fact that the numbers are moving on your screen, it's a, the moment's getting a little bit heated, and you start messing with things, and then you veer off course, and you're making mistakes that you'll regret. So the next one we'll look at is going to be, it's going to build off of this first triggers and OCO order. Okay, And the way this works is this is the first triggers to OCO orders. All right. So what this allows us to do is this allows us to create a little bit more of a complex bracket. Okay. Uh, so what we're able to do is we're able to actually put five orders in. So let's say, for example, we wanted to um, uh, execute a complex order where once one of these triggers here, and let's 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 actually throw a couple more on here. Okay. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do a buy here. Sell there. Okay, so what this is, what's going to happen here is this allows us to actually flip a position and automate the whole entire process. Whereas once the 114 call order triggers, uh, and let me let me set this up here. We're going to put a stop limit here, and our stop limit is going to be and. Doing something like this gets a little bit more complicated. Um, I'd be cautious when you start getting into these complex OCO orders with multiple brackets uh, because it, it's the, the kind of the rule of thumb here is that the more moving parts you have in the machine, the more likelihood that one of them is going to break. Okay, uh, so you know I, I I'm, I'm a firm believer in the kiss principle KISS which means keep it simple stupid uh, and I constantly have to remind myself of that I have it written on my uh, on, a, on, on a big sheet of paper that's 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 tacked to the wall on my trading desk um, so that I can remind myself not to make things too complicated because once we get into all of these moving parts um, there's a higher likelihood of problems uh, occurring here so we just have to be conscientious of that so um, what we're going to do here is we're going to set that and we're going to go about a two cent because we know we had, we're dealing with about a two cent spread here. So, and so the way this type of order would work, let me see if the price is one thirteen fifty seven. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So the way this actually this order would, would work is that once we buy our 114 calls, we're for the most part entering into a strangle here. Okay, and so this is going to allow us, and then this strangle is also going to ha have an additional stop that's going to come into play here on the put side as well. So this allows us to basically put together this entire order and how to uh, manage this, this strangle, which is going to be the 114, 113 puts. Uh, 114 calls rather and the 113 uh, puts and then we're going to have our um, our OCOs which is going to be one cancels the others so when one hits then it's going to cancel the uh, the other orders that are on the table here um, now we can do the same thing here in, because in this instance I use the strangle strategy but you know let's say for example um, we wanted to uh, buy a different company or hedge with a different uh, uh, 
a financial vehicle, whether it be like UVXY or maybe short the spy or something like that. Um, so those are those would be the different methods in which we would utilize this multi bracket first triggers to OCO type order. Now the last one that we're going to look at here, and I'm not going to get into an in-depth explanation on how it works because it's basically the same thing that we just uh, um, covered in regards to how an OCO works, which is going to be the three OCO, which is which really is just allows really just allows us to create seven different orders. Um, so that would be six different uh, variable orders that we can put in based on our single trigger. Okay, and I just let me emphasize again: don't get too complicated with this stuff. Uh, I mean, the tools are there, but that doesn't mean you always have to use them. Um, you know, I like to keep it simple. I'm a you know huge fan of the just standard uh, OCO type order. Uh, it's it's a simple method, and it allows you to um, it allows it, it assists in traders that are still working on on, on developing their own uh, discipline. So. That covers our OCO orders. Uh, well, actually, you know, there's one other thing that I want to go over here. I'm running a little bit longer than I expected, but um, so let's say, for example, we already have an order open. All right. So let's say I already own the 114 calls. Okay. And I just want to set up a regular one cancels the other order. All right. So uh, simply put, the way this would work is I'm already. Let's say I'm already in the 114 calls. I want to set my profit target and I want to set my stop. All right, so what we would do is we would just select the normal OCO in that instance, okay? And since we're already in it, we're going to set our stop. And let's say our entry price was 90 cents, so uh, our upside target is going to be a dollar 20. And that's how it would work. And then we would just click confirm and send. So um, now I couldn't execute this because this is go this is executing would be naked short calls which is not something I, I can I would do or recommend doing uh, but this is how it would work assuming that you did have 114 calls open already and you wanted to put in an OCO order in order to implement your stop and your upside target so uh, the last thing that we're going to cover is going to be a pair okay and Basically, the way a pair works is kind of similar to how Forex works in the sense that you're buying one and you're selling the other. Uh, so let's say that we'll, I think a good example for something like this is if we were trading um, SPY and UVXY. Okay. Uh, so the way that would work would be, and I'm going to go to my watch list here, and we're going to type in SPY. And then we're going to type in here UVXY. Okay, so those are the two that we're going to trigger. And we're going to buy the SPY and short the UVXY. Okay, and that's how a, a, a pair works. Okay, so let's say I'm bullish on the SPY, and as a result, I expect the UVXY to uh, drop as the SPY goes up. Uh, so what this will do is once you execute the order for these hundred shares to go long on the SPY, you'll then also be shorting the UVXY, hence it being called a pair trade, similar to like we do in Forex where you're going long one currency and shorting the other. Uh, so um, that covers uh, our advanced order types for thinkorswim. Um, there's, these are some great tools. Uh, they should be definitely added to the quote unquote trader toolbox that you use. Um, they, they'll pose as fantastic uh, uh, tools when it comes to um, building on your, your trade strategy uh, as well as you know preventing uh, mistakes uh, that, that, that occur as a result of human error um, and the human element. So uh, I'm, I'm you know, a firm advocate of those OCO orders. They, they just, they're fantastic tools to kind of keep yourself in line you know, and let the machines do the work for you. Uh, so as always, uh, come visit us at 360tradingview.com if you're not already a member. Um, check us out in the chat room. Make sure to visit us on StockTwits. Follow TBI, at TBI on StockTwits. Follow us on Twitter at 360tradingview.com. And uh, everybody have a good one.